search for any other instance of this screen size. And we're actually going to change this. So we want to retain functions calling this function. We want to let them sort of still call it in the same way. There's no reason we have to break everything else that calls this get screen size. But one other change we're going to make is return an IVEC2 as, as a copy, not as a reference, because we no longer have this member variable to return a reference of. And we really don't want to start going into crazy territory like creating static variables just for this. Because what we're going to do is just return quite a small object. So it's not a really huge object at all. Okay. Now we just want to find the end screen size and get rid of it. It's fine. And the constructor also took the argument of the screen size. We get rid of that. Uh, we're going to have to change every place that calls that constructor. So we'll just search for it. Okay. That was... Um, not quite what I had in mind, so I'll just do a slightly more refined search. Okay, I didn't type it in right. Let's try that again. Okay, now we can see where it's actually being constructed. So there's only one place where it's constructed, and that's in rcj.cpp. And here it's this is the meat of it. This is what we actually want to return. So we want to return this dynamically every time that function is called. It's going to be pretty fast because it's not returning a massive amount of data. And once we do that, we'll just check why it doesn't like get screen size. Uh, yes, we have to change the uh, signature of the function in this class declaration here to no longer return that. And let's see how that works. Hopefully now the screen size will be returned from the marmalade copy of it, which it stores somewhere deep, deep inside its, its bowels. I'm not really sure where, where that screen size is set, but as long as we can get it every, every frame, we should be all right. So now we're running the app and the news is really good. I think it's working perfectly. It's actually started out in the different orientation. And as you can see, the, um, the zones are now in the correct place, the, these uh, quadrants. So let's uh, try flipping the screen around a little bit and see what happens. I'll just get rid of that breakpoint and go back. Oh, yep, yeah, that's still not working 100%. So we need to have a closer look at why that's not working. I, th I thought it was going to work, but obviously the screen size looks like it's still getting caged somewhere, which is not good for us. And our character seems to have disappeared too, which is even more disturbing. Oh, he's actually in the center of the screen, so that's okay. That may be something we have to look into because um, I'm not really sure why that happened. So let's go and have a quick look at this initialized quadrants and see why it's not working. <coughs> So it works the first time, so that's cool. Rotate it. Okay. Let's go and see what we're getting out here. So it's calling get screen size. So that's actually quite a wasteful way of calling get screen size, but that should be returning the screen width and height. So what's possible is that it may be returning sort of the old width and height. Yep. I'm pretty sure it's returning the old width and height. So what we need to do is do a little bit more work. Um, initialize quadrants should take width and a height. Just give them better names. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to pass them into this function. So this width and height is actually used in quite a couple of places. So, all right, that should do the trick. So now just update the uh, signature function. Oops. Copy the whole thing. That's better. Okay, those could have been const, but anyway, it's not a big deal. So here we're just going to call um, the get screen size functions we saw earlier. There's really no reason to have this in the first place, but we'll just put it here like that. And now what we need to do is look more closely at this register surface thing. So as you recall before I said in the documentation, um, we get returned, we get given a structure, the screen size, and one of the parameters is the system data, which is an instance of S3 surface orientation. So it's a pointer to one of these objects. So we're going to copy this object. And I believe that the uh, correct, correct data is actually inside this See if that is the case. 
So we're going to cast that void pointer into one of these objects, which the documentation says it is. And then inside the orientation, there's a width and a height. So let's try using that instead. It's possible it hasn't just hasn't updated it when we call um, the basic um, IWGX get screen width and height. So that's my current theory. Uh, let's see if that is the correct assumption. So let's run it. Okay, um, that doesn't look correct either. So what we need to do is have a quick look at why this has now decided to use these quadrants. It's possible that our algorithm may be wrong. So let's go and have a quick look at what it's returning here. We'll just restart it to see what happens in the first go around. Okay, so when we call initialize quadrants for the very first time, screen width and height should be. Let's just see what this says. I believe there'll be. Let's just see what we get. We get 720. Ah, oh, okay, this makes sense. So it's actually giving us 720 by 1280. So that's really interesting. Um, we may actually need to do a little bit more work here based on our orientation. Because we're now in this sort of portrait mode. That should still be okay though. That actually makes sense. So we're dividing screen width and height by two. So the quadrant size becomes 360 by 640. So it's taller than it is high. So it's tall and skinny. That half quadrant size looks correct. So the left quadrant ends up being zero, zero. And quadrant size is X, 360, and the quadrant size is Y. It's interesting because the width is 720. Yeah, so that, that should actually be okay. And the height looks okay too. Oh, uh, okay. I think I see what's happening here. It's only doing it half of the, half of it. So if you look closely, this should be as tall as the screen, but it's not because of the divide by two. So actually what needs to happen is we probably need to get rid of that divide by two on the height. I believe this half quadrant size is not used anywhere either, so let's do a quick search for that. I think we may just be able to get away with getting rid of them. Because they're just getting me they're just confusing me now. Okay, so the player position is in the center of the screen. That was always that is always a constant. That doesn't change. So just getting rid of those. So let's try that because I always do want these quadrants to be the full height of the screen. Okay, we're running and let's see what we get. That's looking a whole lot better. Our quadrants seem to be the right size. So let's go back to our surface and rotate it back to normal landscape mode. Initialize quadrants, it's called. And it's perfect. So I think that's working really well. Uh, now the only thing that remains obviously is to try this out on the device. So I'm pretty sure that's going to work because the simulator and the device generally yield very similar results. So thanks for watching.